In this video, we're going to continue to add more drawings to our construction drawing set for the tiny home design. And this is being used as, as a tutorial for Revit 2025 for civil engineering and architecture. We're going to go ahead and down, if you're not in the sheets section in your project browser, we're going to move there. We're going to right click on sheets all and select new sheet. Make sure B 11 by 17 horizontal is selected and select OK. It will have A103 unnamed. I'm going to right click on it and select rename. A103 is the number. We will name this the floor plan and select enter on the keyboard or click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and move up to in the project browser. Drag the 01 floor, floor plan over and click to place it. I'm going to zoom out. You're going to see we've got a very large area that's going to be covered for the view and our view label is all the way down here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate the view by double left clicking on it. And I'm going to select show the crop region. I'm going to select the crop region and drag this in until we get all the way to the inside of our elevation markers but also here close to our tiny home design. While we have this open, I'm going to go ahead and change the view scale up to 3 8 of an inch equals a foot. It may move on you, that's okay. Let me go ahead and hide that show, hide that crop region, and double left click to deactivate it. Then if I hover over that view, that floor plan or that view, I can drag it onto the sheet. And I want to make sure grab that. I'll have to deselect by just clicking off somewhere here in the white space just grab the view label bring it up here if I wish to shorten it then I gotta click on the view a little blue dot will appear and that allows us to drag and shorten that line for us a few things we might want to do before we start uh, adding dimensions to this floor plan is we gotta think about what do we need to know about in order to create this floor plan we really don't need to know have the patterns of the floor in there and we definitely don't need a lot of the furniture and some of the other elements. So I'm actually going to double click on this to activate the view once more. I'm going to go ahead and press VB on my keyboard. That's the shortcut to get to visibility graphics. You can also do VG as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start hiding some stuff that I have here on the view. So for example, I'm going to move this menu here. And number one, I can kind of tell is I need to do furniture. So I'm going to press F on my keyboard, and that takes me down to that category. I'm going to uncheck furniture, and I can hit apply and see what disappears. I'm going to also do floors. Click apply. I'm going to go ahead and choose lighting uh, fixtures. Click apply. That lamp goes away. And then I have to look at, like, plumbing. So plumbing fixtures, the toilet and the shower should disappear then. And then I may want to look at some things like railings, which are going to be right here on the edges of the stairs, and even the stairs. So we really don't need those. If I go ahead and select OK, that's really what we need to have for our floor plan. So while I've got this activated, I want to go ahead and add those dimensions in. Doing typical architectural, uh, architectural dimensioning, I'm going to go ahead and go up here. I'm going to go to the Annotate tab. If I'm not there already, go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the Align Dimension tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the outside edge. So we've already got 12 foot to measure this wall. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the outside edge of the wall. I'm going to go to the center of the door. And I'm going to go to the outside edge there. So that's going to place what my measurements are for where the door is. I'm going to follow the same convention for the west elevation. You'll notice a little blue line will show up when you're in the middle of a window and I can select it. Same thing here as I get close to the center. Click, go to the outside edge and place those intermediate dimensions. And then don't forget we also need to place an outside dimension for our wall. So there's that one. This one on the north side has a little bit of a different scenario. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just grab that window. That looks good. But we do have, as we go from the center of this 
window to the center of the wall. Snap that there. And then if I need to, I can go ahead and just click and go from here to here and place that as such. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag on the out, click on the outside faces here. See the 12 foot, and very similar on this east elevation. I'm gonna do the exact same kind of thing. Go to the center of the wall, keep going. Go to the center of this window. Go to the outside edge of this wall here. So I'm actually gonna place these just kind of outside. Right click this and say cancel twice to get rid of doing dimensions and I'm going to drag this 16 foot dimension to the outside making sure all the dimensions don't interfere with each other and make sure that they fit within the border and everything there the last thing you we might want to do is put in some dimensions for the interior rooms now here's something that I do as a little as a little help is I'll click on the align tool I'll choose the inside faces of my wall so here's one that's four feet and a half inches. And here's five foot, seven and one fourth inches. Rather than having all these lines kind of crisscross, because you're going to have that happen in the main area, is I'm actually just going to go ahead and place those dimensions. Go up here to the text tool. Click to place the text. I'm going to change this over from the, from the type once I get it typed in here. But I can go ahead and type four feet dash zero space half an inch by which would be an X and then five feet dash seven and one fourth inches double click I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape so a couple times stop placing the text select this one that I just did and change that to a three thirty seconds and now I can go ahead and I can get rid of these dimensions by selecting them and selecting delete and I can place this place this right inside this room so we know how big that the room is there so you might want to re kind of repeat that process again I can kind of go along here like if we wanted this to be the little section that we have in our room here six foot nine by probably about I'll go from this point five and eleven and three quarters so text, click to place, six foot nine inches by five foot eleven and three quarters inches. Cancel a couple times, select it, change to three thirty seconds, and we can get rid of these two. So for some of the interior portions, it kind of cleans up some of the area here. The last one I'm going to hit is just this one. So let's say we'll go from here to here. I'm not going to factor in the bay window as part of the, the floor opening. So we'll just go ahead and put this in. Perfect. Use my text tool. Hit the drop down before I start to click to place it. I can do 330 seconds. I don't have to worry about messing with all that there. So 11, 11 feet, 2 inches by 9 feet, 2 and 1 fourth inches. Get rid of these two. Place that right here in the center. So as far as architectural dimensioning, if I double left click off of that floor plan, this will provide us a floor plan view of our tiny home design. And we can go ahead and start to look at what would be the next item that we would put into our, into our drawing set. So I'm actually gonna go back to the sheets category. I'm gonna right click on sheets all, select new sheet, we're going to do a B11 by 17 horizontal. Select OK. A104 unnamed. We can right click on it and select rename. This one we're going to call the furniture plan. Now, 
in order to get that particular case I'm gonna right click on the floor plan I want to say duplicate view and duplicate with detailing so here is our copy of our floor plan with the dimensions and it copied all that over so the detailing is all the dimensions that we have so I kind of did that on purpose because when I go to the furniture plan I really don't need the dimensions but I'm gonna drag it over and I can actually rename 01 floor and then I can go to put like dash furniture plan and I'm gonna double left click on here I'm gonna hit VV on the keyboard and I'm gonna go to annotation categories and if I type D for dimensions I can uncheck the dimensions and click apply that'll hide all those dimensions now this one in this case is a so or if you take a look so it's usually annotations but you may have to go to G which is generic annotations and see if those will, will hide so it didn't really look like it really hid very well text notes may be the next thing yep so down in T's text notes and what we can do is so that's annotation categories I'm gonna go to model categories and let's turn the furniture back on and some of the other items we turned off so like I'm gonna leave the floors off but maybe the furniture and then like the lighting fixtures and as far as the plumbing fixtures let's go ahead and hit apply and we'll add all that stuff back in and say okay double left click all we're doing is just showing the furniture plan as far as how would you go about just kind of furnishing the area and be able to have that there so for a tiny home it seems like it should be a lot of waste of paper but when you're developing a, a large-scale home you'd end up having by filling that paper a lot more as you go along so all right this is going to go ahead and finish out the fourth drawing in the set of six drawings that we're going to go ahead and uh, detail our tiny home design with check out the next video to look at the last two and we'll look at finishing up the, the documentation of the tiny home design in Revit 2025.